Well, let's see how we're doing on these so far. So the first one here, remember our first step when we're asked to factor one of these algebraic numbers, factoring a polynomial, is to look for a greatest common factor. And to do that, we look at the numbers of each term, of each digit. So we've got 28 and 44. So out of 28 and 44, we need to find the largest number that goes into both of those. If we don't see it, we can always factor those. 28 would factor into 2 times 2 times 7. 44, if we did the factor tree, would be 2 times 2 times 11. Now we're looking for greatest common factor. So common implies that they're in common. So that means we take the factors that are in common or that they share. They each have a 2. 2 times 2 gives us 4. So 4 is the greatest common factor for 28 and 44. Now for the variables, for each variable we take the lowest power. So we have x to the fourth and x squared, so that means we're going to have x squared is the smaller of the powers. We have y to the third and y to the fourth. That's going to leave us with y to the third is the smaller power. Now we need to find the uh, second factor. Now remember down here at the factor trees, if I had 28, if I took out a factor of 2 to get the other number here, I would divide. 28 divided by 2 is 7. I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to divide this by that factor of 4x squared y to the third. So I start out with a number, 28 divided by 4, which is 7. I'm going to divide each variable. x to the fourth divided by x squared. 4 minus 2 is 2, so that's x squared. And y to the third divided by y third cancels out. So I move on to the next piece here. Negative 44x squared y to the fourth divided by the 4x squared y. Negative 44 divided by 4 is negative 11. x squared divided by x squared cancels out. y to the fourth divided by y to the third. Well, 4 minus 3 is 1, so that's y to the 1 or just y. So that factor is to be that right there, 4x squared y to the third times, then in parentheses, 7x squared minus 11y. Over here now, we look for greatest common factor first. So we've got 2, 16, and 15. Those have no common factor other than 1. But we do have a variable. We have an x in each term. So we do have a common factor of x. So I can divide out that x. 2x to the third divided by x is 2x squared. 16x squared divided by x. Well, the, again, the x squared divided by x is just x. So that's just 16x. And 15x divided by x. The x is just cancels. That's just 15. However, I'm not done with this one. This piece inside here can be factored further. After our greatest common factor, the second thing that we try is that reverse multiplication or FOIL and reverse. Remember the first two numbers here, the first digit in each of them has to multiply to make that first digit here, 2x squared, the only way I can get that is if I have 2x times x. The last digits in each have to multiply to make the 15. So that's either going to be a 1 times 15 or a 3 times 5. So let's try the 5 and the 3. How do we know if those are the right numbers? Well, we check the outside and the inside. On the outside, 2x times 3 would be 
six X. On the inside, five times X would be five X. That's going to be 11 X. That's not what we want. We want 16 X. Let's change the order. If I put the three here and the five there. On the outside, two X times five is 10 X. On the inside, three times X is three X. That's 13 X again, that's not 16 X. That's not what we want. So three and five don't work. We could try the one and 15. From here we can tell already it's not going to work because 2x times 15 is 30x. 1 times 1 is 1x. That's 31x. That ain't going to do it. We switch them. Put the 15 here. And the 1 there. 2x times 1 is 2x. 15 times x is 15x. That adds up to 17x. Still not what we want. So that tells us that this can't be factored. So we actually needed to stop right there. Oh, let's do one more here. I'll adjust this just a little bit. So I want you to try to factor that one. This one does factor using that reverse multiplication. So I'll give you a minute to try that one quick. See you, Pete, and see how you did. So since this first digit here is just x squared, that just has to be x times x. These last ones have to multiply to make 24, so it's going to leave us quite a few options. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, or 4 times 6. Which ones did you use? 2 and 12. Let's double check them to make sure. X times 12 is 12 X. On the inside, two times X is two X. It adds up to 14 X, which is that middle digit. So that is the proper factoring. X plus two times X plus 12. And as we looked at last week, there are applications of this. Um, if you're looking at 
equations for describing you know, the height of a ball or we, we shot somebody out of a cannon. I don't remember who um, looked at how long it takes for them to get back to the ground or whatever. Um, let's say that we are throwing a ball up into the air at a speed of 80 feet per second. is isn't horribly fast. That's about a little under 60 miles per hour. Pretend that's going straight up. And I want to know how long it takes before that ball comes back down to the ground. Well, the equation that describes the height of the ball in relation to time, h with a little t there means height in terms of time. It is going to be that initial speed, the 80 feet per second, times the time, minus 16 times the time squared. 16 is from the acceleration of gravity. So when this ball comes back down to the ground, the height is going to equal zero. So we put zero in there for the height. We get that equation. Now we cannot solve that equation by removing pieces from it and getting the variable alone because not only does the variable appear twice, it's a t and a t squared, which cannot be combined. So there is no way to combine the t's to get it all in one spot so that we can, can solve this with traditional methods. This is what's called, you don't need to know this term, it's what's called a quadratic equation. When you have the variable squared and the variable without a power, that's called a quadratic equation. The only way to solve that is to do factoring. Step one to solve it would be to make it equal zero, which it already is in this case because we're looking at when the height is zero. Step two is then going to be a factor. So on this side, we can have a greatest common factor of 16t. If I divide this whole thing by 16t, 80 divided by 16 is 5. t divided by t cancels out. Negative 16 divided by 16 is a negative 1. t squared divided by t is just t. Once we've factored it, remember, we talked about that zero product rule. If two numbers multiply to make zero, one of them has to be zero. So here either the 16t equals zero, or 5 minus 1t, or just 5 minus t, has to equal 0. Now these are simple equations that we can solve. Because it's not a t squared anymore, it's just a t. We can solve this by dividing by 16. 0 divided by 16 is 0. What that is saying is that the time 0 seconds, the ball was on the ground. Well, that's when we threw it, so it was on the ground when we threw it. Over here, 5 minus t, well, I'm going to subtract 5. So negative t equals negative 5. And I'm going to divide by negative 1 to get rid of the negative 1. So that cancels out t equals 5. That makes sense as well because I would say that the ball comes back to the ground at 5 seconds. So that's the time it takes for that ball to get back to the ground. So this factoring isn't just something I'm doing to make you do it. There are applications of it. In this course, we don't get too far into those applications. That's not something you will see on a quiz or a test. But I wanted you to see that there is a next step and there is a point to doing the factoring. Okay, well... Um, just a side note, by the way, before we get started on today's new material. Thursday of this week, I am going to be in meetings all day. So I won't be here for class. But there's a chance, and I'll let you know for sure on Wednesday. Um, they do community college engagement surveys. They randomly select classes every semester that they have to survey for this. And this class has been chosen. So I've asked them if they can do that survey on Thursday. So it is important that you all be here. It's 
how we evaluate ourselves and figure out whether as a school we're doing what you need us to do. So it's your chance to tell the school what you need or what, what we're doing well and what you want us to, to do better. Um, I will let you know for sure on Thursday whether that survey is going to come through or not, if they're going to be able to do it that day. On Wednesday, I should say. On Wednesday, I'll let you know for sure whether we're going to be able to do that survey Thursday. Otherwise, if they don't do that survey on Thursday, there won't be class on Thursday. Just so you guys have some advanced warning. Okay, so our new material. We have been solving equations, and we have solved some equations that had this form. And we've worked with a lot of expressions, so simplifying expressions that look like this. Anytime we see parentheses, of course, it should call to us to do something there first. And there's always two questions we have to ask. The first one is, is there anything that needs to be done inside the parentheses? Inside this set of parentheses, is there anything we can do? 2x minus 7 cannot be combined. So there's nothing we can do there. The second question then is, is, is there something we need to do to the parentheses? And in this case there is, it's being multiplied by 8. So we're going to multiply that 8 through the parentheses, a process that some books call distributing. 8 times 2x is 16x. And 8 times negative 7, negative 56. Good. That equals 24. Now this is an equation that's in that simple two-step form that we said. To solve it, we're going to add the 56. So we're left with 16x over here. 24 plus 56 is 80. And our last step, Divided by 16. 80 divided by 16 is 5. So x equals 5. As always, we could go back and we could plug that 5 in for x and see if this is true. So instead of 2 times x, it becomes 2 times 5 minus 7. So inside here, 2 times 5 is 10. The 24, there's going to be nothing that happens to the 24 on the right. So I'm just going to circle that and leave that. Then we have the 10 minus 3, or 10 minus 7 is 3 here. And 8 times 3 is 24. So I do get 24 on both sides. So that is the correct answer. So just double checking it. Well, these problems do get more complex. We run into ones like this. Well, we still, this by the way is a 90 out of 96 or read. We still look at those parentheses and we have to start there. There is nothing we can do inside that parentheses, so we're going to multiply by the 5. 5 times 7x. 35x. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. And we still have the plus 5 over there. So then our next step on the left side is to do what? Combine the negative 20 and the positive 5 is negative 15. So we've got 35x minus 15 equals 90. Now again, we're down to that two-step form. So what do we do next? Add the 15. So 35x is 105, and then divide by 35, good. x equals 3. We could go back and put it in there and double-check it again. I'm going to leave it up to you at this point. Trust that you guys can do that. Well, just a little bit of a twist.
when we do this, where do I start? Parentheses, nothing to do in them, so I'm going to distribute the 5. 5 times 3x, 15x. 5 times 1, positive 5. I do still have that plus 2x there. So now what do I have to do? Perfect. 15x and 2x makes 17x. We still have the positive 5. Now what? Minus 5. There we go. 17x equals 51. And finally, divide by 17. x equals 3. Well, I'm going to have you guys try one of those. I'll make this one slightly more interesting. Let's give that one a shot. Let's see how you're doing here. We can start out, of course, here's our equal sign, so we can simplify each side separately until we're ready to start solving. So on the left side, let's do what we can. You see the parentheses? There's nothing to do in them, so we're going to multiply by the 7. 7 times 2x, 14x. 7 times 5, positive 35. Now we still have the negative 4x over here. So before I do anything on the right side, I'm going to finish combining here. I can combine 14x and negative 4x, which will make 10x. I still have the positive 35. Over on the right side now I can combine. I see the parentheses. Nothing to do in them, so I'm going to multiply by the 5. 5 times 6x. 30x, and 5 times a negative 3, negative 15, and then I have the positive 4. So over there, there's nothing to combine with the 30x, but I can combine negative 15 and 4 to make negative 11, or negative 11, yes. Got negative 15 and a positive 4, which made it 11. So our next step. We've simplified both sides, but there's still an x on each side. So I have to get rid of one of them. I get rid of the smaller one, which is the 10x. So I subtract 10x. I have to subtract from both sides. So this leaves me with just 35 on the left. 30x minus 10x. 20x. Now I'm down to the variable appearing just once, so now I can solve this. I'm going to start by adding 11. So 46 equals 20x. My last step would be divide by 20. So 46 divided by 20 is 2.3 equals x. Any questions? That is fine, yeah. And really, you can take that 46 over 20, and you can reduce it however you want to. Um, you can do it as 2 and 6 twentieths, and then, of course, reduce the 6 twentieths down to 3 tenths. That is just fine. Okay, well, let's look at something that's a little bit different. They look simpler, but they're not. This one here looks relatively simple, but we look at this parentheses here. There's nothing to do inside of it. And when we ask if there's anything that needs to be done to it, it looks like there isn't. But there is. So you think of this as being a negative 1 out here. 
that parentheses is being multiplied by a negative 1. So we have to do that. So the 2x up here is not going to change. This is negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So now on the left side here, I can combine 2x to negative 5x makes negative 3x. Then what? Add the 1 to make it 15. Negative 3x equals 15. And finally, divide by negative 3. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 is a negative 5. So x is negative 5. And you can again plug that back in to double check your answer. So you have to be very careful when there is a minus in front of a parentheses. That subtraction or that negative has to be distributed through the parentheses. Easiest way to do that is just like I did here, make that a negative 1 times the parentheses and multiply it through. So I'm going to have you guys try this one that's similar to that. I'll give you a couple minutes to work on that one. So on one like this, we got two sets of parentheses, so we're going to work left to right. First one, again, well, there's nothing we can do inside either of these, so we won't even ask. First one, we're going to multiply by the 2. 2 times the 5x, 10x, and 2 times negative 4, negative 8. Now, the second one is that situation we were talking about. There's just the, the minus or the negative in front of it. We make that a negative 1, and we multiply by a negative 1. So negative 1 times 3x, negative 3x, and negative 1 times 2, negative 2. So now, on the left side, we can still combine. 10x and negative 3x makes... 7x. 10 minus 3 is going to be 7. Negative 8 and negative 2 make negative 10. And now we can go ahead and solve. Adding 10. 7x equals 14. And finally, divide by 7 to get x equals 2. And again, you could put that back in for x to make sure it worked out. Well, we can make these kind of ugly if we want to. This one's similar to that last one, only we've got variables on the other side as well. And again, I'm going to start by just simplifying the left side first. So we're going to multiply this parentheses by the 7. So 7 times 2x is 14x. 7 times the negative 5, negative 35. Now this parentheses, nothing to do in them is being multiplied by a negative 2. So negative 2 times 3x, negative 6x. Negative 2 times 1, negative 2. I'm going to keep combining there. 14x and negative 6x. 8x. Negative 35 and negative 2, negative 37. On the right side, I just have the 3x plus 13. There's nothing to re reduce or combine there. 
So now I still have a variable on each side. I need to get rid of one of them. We always try to get rid of the smaller one, which will be the 3x. I'll subtract 3x from both sides. So on the right side over here, it's gone, leaving me with just the positive 13. On the left side, I have 8x minus 3x is 5x. We still have the negative 37. And now we solve. We start off by... And 37, so 5x is all that's left on the left side, 13 plus 37 is 50, and finally, divide by 5, x equals 10. I'm going to have you guys try one of those longer ones. Give that one a shot in your notes, and we'll talk about it in just a minute. Okay, it's about time for a break. So let's take our break, and we'll come back, and we'll discuss this problem when we get back. Okay, so for a problem like this, again, here's our equal sign. So we're going to work with the left side first and simplify that. Then we'll work on the right side and simplify that. So on the left, we have multiple parentheses, so we're going to go left to right. Nothing to do inside this one, so we're going to multiply by the 3. So 3 times 5x, 15x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Second parentheses, nothing to do inside of them. So we're going to multiply by the negative 2. Negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. And negative 2 times 4 negative 8. So let's continue to simplify here on the left side. We can combine 15x and negative 6x to make 9x. There we go. And then negative 3 and negative 8 to make negative 11. On the right side, again there's multiple parentheses, so we're going to go left to right. Nothing to do inside this one, so I'll multiply by the 5. 5 times 2x, 10x. 5 times 7, 35. Then the next one here, again, nothing to do inside them, so we're going to multiply by the 2. 2 times x, positive 2x, good. And 2 times negative 3, negative 6. And we do still have the plus 2 there. So now we can combine 10x and 2x make 12x. Now we've got positive 35, negative 6, and positive 2. Okay, yeah, positive 35 and negative 6 is, ne is positive 29, plus 2 is positive 31. Good. And now we still have an x on each side, so we have to get rid of one. Which one are we going to get rid of? The 9x. We're going to subtract 9x. So we're left with negative 11 over here. 12 minus 9 is 3x plus 31. Then what? Subtract 31. Negative 11 minus 31 is a negative 42. And last step, divide by 3. Negative 42 divided by 3 is a negative 14 equals x. So x is negative 14. How many of you had that? No, well, that one was a tough one. I might not get quite that extreme on you on the test. Okay, so our next step now is we want to look at equations with fractions in them. And we have looked a little bit at equations like this.
And we've said there are two ways of interpreting this equation. The first way we can interpret this equation is x over 3 can be thought of as 1 third times x. x over 2 can be thought of as 1 half times x. That equals 15. And now to solve it, we're just going to combine these two like we would any other time that the, the variable appears twice on the same side. It just looks a little different because we have to add fractions. So one third plus one half is five sixths x. Now to solve this, we have to divide by the five sixths. So x equals 15 divided by 5 6. That would be 15 divided by 5 6 becomes 15 over 1 times 6 over 5. Ends up being 18. x is 18. So that's one way of interpreting that problem. The other way of interpreting that problem is to look at it and say we need to get rid of the fractions. We need to find a common denominator, the least common denominator. Now, the least common denominator is going to be the least common multiple. Well, it is the least common multiple of the denominators. So for 2 and 3, what is that least common denominator going to be? 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole equation by 6 and get rid of those fractions. So 6 times x over 3, that'll be 6 over 1 times x over 3. That becomes 6x over 3, which divides out to be 2x. Then we've got the 6 times x over 2. So 6 over 1 times x over 2. That becomes 6x. 6 times x is 6x. 1 times 2 is 2. So 6x over 2, so that's positive 3x. Now we have the equal sign. Now we're going to do the... 6 times the 15, which is just 90. And now we can go ahead and solve this equation. Combine 2x and 3x is 5x equals 90 divided by 5. This is x equals 18. So we get the same answer either way. Now, in this case, I think this one is more work. This one's a little bit simpler if you're okay with adding one-third and one-half as fractions. We can run into equations like this one. Where, again, it all depends on how comfortable you are working with fractions. I could treat this as 1 third x plus 2x equals 21. Combining 1 third x plus 2x is just 2 and 1 third x equals 21. Then divide by 2 and 1 third. Well, 21 divided by 2 and 1 third is going to be 21 divided by 2 and 1 third as an improper fraction. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7, so it's going to be divided by 7 thirds. So that's going to be 21 over 1 times 3 over 7, which is 63 over 7 or 9. X would be 9. Or,
We could have got rid of the fraction. Again, the only denominator is 3, so 3 will be the common denominator. This one's going to be a little bit easier to multiply through. 3 times x over 3, well, the 3's just cancel, we get x. 3 times 2x, 6x. 3 times 31, 93. 6x plus 6x is 7x equals 93, and then divide by 7. What went wrong there? Ah, that's what it is. Yes. Thank you. This should be 21, so I would make this 63 divided by 7, so x equals 9. Thank you. We better get the same answer both ways. Now again, for this equation, I think this is still easier. And for this equation here, still, I think it's easier to just go ahead and solve with the fractions. So I would add 3 fourths. So I've got 2x equals 6 and a half plus 3 fourths is 7 and a quarter. And we divide by 2. x equals 7 and a quarter divided by 2 is... And five eighths. Seven and a quarter divided by two. We do seven times four is twenty-eight plus one is twenty-nine fourths divided by two over one. That's twenty-nine fourths times one over two, which is twenty-nine eighths, which is three and five eighths. So again, that one's easier just to solve it with the fractions than it is to try to multiply it. We could multiply that by a 4 and get rid of all the fractions if we wanted to. Because 4 is the least common denominator. 4 times 2 is, 2x is 8x. 4 times negative 3 fourths is negative 3. 4 times 6 and a half is 26. And if we solve that, we're going to get the same answer now. Adding 3, 8x is 29. Dividing by 8, x is again 3 and 5 eighths. So depending on your level of comfort with fractions, one way might be easier than the other. But again, I think just working with the fractions is probably still a little simpler. The reason I show you this method here is because there are going to be some of them that we have to use that method. Let me show you what I mean. we might run into some like this, where the variable is on the bottom of the fraction. There's absolutely no way to solve this with the variable on the bottom of the fraction. So we have no choice but to get it out of there, to get rid of it. So what we're going to do is look at common denominators. Now remember, common denominators are least common multiples. Now, in the last couple of classes, in the very beginning of this class, we talked about greatest common factors. Greatest common factors are smaller than the numbers, but they divide into all of them. Least common multiples are the opposite. They are larger than the numbers, and the numbers divide into it. 
Remember when we did this, greatest common or least common denominator or least common multiple for variables, we find the LCM of the numbers. So for this problem, the numbers we have are 6 and 3. What's the least common denominator there? 6, right? Because 3 goes into 6. And then we do the largest power of each variable. Well, in this case, the it's just x, so it's going to be x. So that means is our least common multiple here is 6x. So I'm going to take that equation. And multiply by 6x. So 6x times 3 is pretty simple. That's 18x. 6x times 2 over x. So we need the 6x over 1 times 2 over x. 6x times 2 is 12x. 1 times x is x. 12x divided by x is just 12. We do 6x times 5 over 6. So 6x over 1 times 5 over 6. 6x times 5 is 30x. 1 times 6 is 6. 30x divided by 6 is 5x. Anyone that could have cross-canceled the 6s here? Yes, I could have. I just did it out the long way because when there's variables in there, a lot of people get confused by cross-canceling. Now I've got the 6x times the 5x over 3. So 6x over 1 times 5, sorry, 5 over 3x, I should say that is. 6x times 5 is 30x. 1 times 3x is 3x. 30 divided by 3 is 10. x divided by x divides out. So now I have this equation right here to solve. I will combine 18x and 5x is 23x plus 12 equals 10. We will subtract the 12. 23x equals a negative 2. And our last step, divide by 23. Anybody look at that? What do we do with negative 2 divided by 23? This is negative 2 23. What do you think? Good stuff? Okay. Let's do another one of those. Do this one. We have for denominators here x, 5, and 2x. For the numbers, for 5 and 2, what's our least common denominator, least common multiple? 10. We have the x there, our lowest or, or highest power of the x, I should say, is just x. So 10x is going to be our common denominator. So we're going to multiply this whole thing by 10x. So 10x times 4, 40x.
10x times 6 over x is this 10x over 1 times 6 over x. 10x times 6 is 60x. 1 times x is x. 60x divided by x is just 60. So 10x times 2 fifths. 10x over 1 times 2 over 5. 10x times 2 is 20x. 1 times 5 is 5. 20 divided by 4, or 20 divided by 5 is 4. And the x is still there. So now on the other side, 10x times 3 over 2x. 10x over 1 times 3 over 2x. 10x times 3 is 30x. 1 times 2x is 2x. 30 divided by 2 is 15. x and x divide out. I'm going to combine 40x and 4x make 44x. I still have the positive 60. Then what? Subtract 60. 44x equals a negative 45. And then... Divide by 44. X equals negative 45 over 44 is a negative 1 and 144. What do you think? Let's try... Something just a touch more difficult. So Looking at this one, now we actually do not have to multiply this out. I could divide this out. I could do 4x plus 3 divided by 15. Well, 4x divided by 15 is 4 fifteenths x. 3 divided by 15 is 1 fifth. Here, however, I'd have to treat this as a negative 9. 2x divided by negative 9 is negative 2 ninths x. Negative 3 divided by negative 9 is a positive 1 third. And there's going to be a lot of ugly fractions here. I don't want to do it that way. We are going to find that least common denominator. And we're going to multiply this out. But we have 15, 9, 6, and 5. All numbers. We don't have to worry about any variables in our common denominator. 4, 15, 9, 6, and 5, what is our least common denominator? Well, the 45 will work for the 9, the 15, and the 5, but not the 6. We actually have to go up to 90. Remember, we could factor. 15 is 3 times 5. 9 is 3 times 3. 6 is 2 times 3. And 5 is just 5. So they have nothing that's in common in all of them. This one has a second 3, so I need a second 3 up here. This one has a 2, so I need a 2 up there. Already has the 5. This one needs the 5 and the 2. This one needs a second 3 and a 5. This one needs a 2 and then both 3s. If I multiply that out, I do get 90 for each of those.
So 90 is my least common multiple or least common denominator. So to do 90 times 4x plus 3 over 15. Take this 90 over 1. 4x plus 3 over 15. Now here I am going to cross cancel. 15 and 90 both divide by 15 give me 1 and 6. So this is 6 times 4x plus 3. 6 times 4x is 24x. 6 times 3 is positive 18. So now this one, I still have 90 over 1. The negative 1 here is going to go with the denominator of the 9. Negative 9. So 2x minus 3. Again, I am going to cross cancel. I can divide by negative 9 on both of those. Come on. Make this 1, and this will be a negative 10. Why did I divide by a negative 9 instead of just a 9? I wanted to make this a positive 1, so I have no numer no denominator anymore. So now negative 10 times 2x. Negative 20x. Negative 10 times negative 3 is a positive 30. And that equals... On the other side over here, we've got 90 times the 6x plus 4 over 6. So 90 over 1, 6x plus 4 over 6. Again, we're going to cross cancel the 6 and the 90. This will be 1 and 15. So it's 15 times 6x is 90x. 15 times 4 is a positive 60. And finally, 90 times x over 5. So 90 over 1 times x over 5. We will cross cancel the 5 and the 90. Give me 1 and 18. 18 times x is 18x over 1. So that's just 18x. So we have a little bit of combining to do here. 24 and negative 20 make 4x. 18 and 30 make 48. On the right side, we've got 90x and 18x make 108x plus 60. We have to get rid of the, we'll rid of the smaller x, which is the 4x. Let's subtract 4x. So 48 equals 104x plus 60. We'll subtract the 60. 48 minus 60 is a negative 12. And our last step is going to be to divide by the 104. Negative 12. Over 104, both of those can be divided by 4 to give me a negative 3 over 26. So x is negative 3 over 26. Uh, I will not be that mean to you on a test, but those examples are out there. Okay, the final thing for today. What happens when we run into a problem like this? Well, we see that x squared in there, and it looks a lot like that example I showed you at the beginning of class today where we had to factor. But remember, before we start factoring or doing anything to solve, we need to simplify. And here, we think of this here as being a negative 1 times that parentheses there. So I'm going to multiply by the negative 1. Negative 1 times 2x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4. 
So I still have the 2x squared minus 3x plus 7 over here. And it all equals 7. Well, I continue to combine on the left side. And what I find, 2x squared and negative 2x squared cancel out. So the x squared disappears, and it's not going to be playing any part in solving this equation. So I still have negative 3x. 7 and 4 make 11. That equals 7. Now I can solve this equation by subtracting 11. Negative 3x equals negative 4. And then divide by negative 3. x equals negative divided by negative is a positive. 4 over 3 is 1 and 1 third. So x is 1 and 1 third. So when we look at those, when we see that x squared, we have to combine and simplify what we can on that side of the equation. And for right now, for us, that x squared better disappear. If it doesn't, then you did something wrong because every equation I give you, the x squared will disappear. It might look something like this. So here, if I go to, to work with this, I see there's an x squared on each side. I have to get rid of one of them. I'll subtract the 7x squared. Well, they're both 7x squared. So when I subtract, they cancel out. I now have negative 2x plus 5 equals 3x minus 15. And now I go to, to solve it. There's still an x on each side, so I get rid of the smaller one, which is the negative 2x. I add 2x. So 5 equals 3x plus 2x is 5x minus 15. And now it's just like any of the others. We'll add 15. So 20 equals 5x. And we'll divide by 5. So 4 equals x. So you can see, again, it's a little bit different way of doing it, but the x squared still cancels out and disappears. The only way, the only time that that x squared will ever stay in that equation and not disappear is if it looks like this. Something like that. Let's do this. The x squared is the only variable that there is no x without the square. So now we can solve this by our conventional methods of solving an equation. We're going to add the 3 to get rid of it. So 7x squared equals 175. We're going to divide by 7. x squared equals 25. And now there's, only, there's an extra step at the end is all that it changes. The x is squared, so to get rid of the squared, we have to square root. The square root and the squared cancel out. Square root of 25 is 5, so x equals 5. Now there is also a second answer. x squared could be neg yeah, negative 5 squared is also 25, so x could be negative 5 as well. Okay, I think you guys have had enough for the day. So there is a new quiz for tomorrow. That's Tuesday, March 28th. That'll be due at 11.59 p.m. 
Here's a new homework that is due for Wednesday in class. And again, I will let you know on Wednesday for sure whether you have to come in for Thursday or not. They said we will not have a lecture, but they may be doing that community college survey on Thursday. Computer Lab Next Door is open if you guys want to start your quiz or work on homework. 